G'day guys, welcome back of course to the uh, Time Bomb channel, hope all is good in your part of the world and today on the channel we are looking at the brand new Seiko Prospects, that is the SSC 9471P1, the speed timer. Um, this one has been lent into the channel by First Class Watches um, here in the UK and more on that in a second. Let me just uh, zoom in here because you're going to want to see this one up close. All right, so yeah, as I said, you're going to want to see this one up close. I mean, it's just absolutely delicious to look at. If, you, if you'd told me originally that this, this was the color combination that they were going to create, put on this, I would have said, what? Are you serious? But the thing really does work very well. So first class watches um, over there in the, in, in the uh, West Midlands have lent this one into the channel. Massive thank you to them for that. I really, really appreciate it. I would strongly recommend that you uh, check them out and please let them know, of course, that you've come via the uh, Time Bombardier channel. Another reason to check them out is that, curiously, this one is out of stock on the UK uh, Seiko website, but First Class have got them in stock, so do give them a shout. Now, there's been a little bit of commentary around some of these things, and I'm going to start with an apology, and that apology is, sorry, I'm not going to call this one um, a new Pogue. I'm usually quite quick uh, to criticise uh, Seiko sales techniques um, with uh, limited editions and uh, all the other bits and pieces, um, but I'm going to defend them here because I've been checking out their websites in the States and here in the UK, and I can't see any reference at all of their to the Pogue. So I'm wondering who perhaps started to sell this, and I'm going to suggest it might be some watch shops um, that, that were looking to uh, looking to jump on this one to to get some uh, get some sales or at least generate some interest. I also desperately want to believe that Seiko could create a faithful modern version of the 6139 if they really, really wanted to. As I said just at the beginning, I think the best thing about this thing is truly, truly the colours. I mean, just absolutely stunning. Um, it's rare to see them combined because perhaps they aren't that natural choice, but I think oddly they work really very well indeed specifically framed by that steel with the tacky scale and everything like that as I say it's just an odd combination but it works very well indeed gold on watches of course more frequently features or appears on the case bodies or uh, you know in that awful two-tone of, of a bracelet um, there aren't many golden shower dials out there so well done to them for being so brave with putting it on this the other upside uh, to that dial color, of course, is that depending on the light, um, you're just getting a huge um, uh, bunch of shades and reflections, refractions, and everything that you could possibly imagine off that, off that dial. It's just endless hours of fun. You're really going to enjoy it. You've got everything from the full gold to the more glowy orange. Um, and oddly on the uh, Seiko website, they actually call this a yellow dial but only in very uh, extreme lights does it actually sort of look anything yellow. Key speckage on this one then. So across, uh, we're looking at 41 and a half mils, uh, but you're probably going to need to add just a fraction on there, of course, uh, for the protrusion of the crowns. North to south, it's a very, very manageable uh, 46 mils, and then it's quite deep at 13 mils deep, 13 mils. Um, the strap the the lugs oddly and that odd choice of 21 mils i'm sure they could have gone with 21 or 22. you do then get up the top a lump uh, of beautiful sapphire with plenty of ar coating on there which i think yeah is fundamental if you consider the colors underneath you really do need that um you then obviously have a screw down crown over here and just before i should i should say the reason why i've got a finger cut off is because the camera yes is a touch screen <laughs> And, uh, it doesn't work uh, with gloves. And we'll see the quick set date and everything here. As I say, silky, silky smooth. Um, and certainly one of the better ones that um, I've, I've operated of uh, Seiko uh, recently. Um, comes with a hundred meters worth of watery goodness. So I'm just looking through the camera just to see what I'm doing with that crown. That's better. Um, and then buzzing away inside, we've got the Seiko's um, v192 um i kind of like that they've made it solar uh because it potentially makes the watch a little bit more affordable but it's also a little bit confusing because 
they make some pretty decent um, mecha quartz chrono movements themselves. So um, it's kind of like, yeah, what was the what was the motivation for for that? So then we've just kicked the uh, chrono into action so that you can see the seconds hand uh, moving around there. That nice red just matches and it's sufficiently visible over that golden dial as well. And obviously the, you've got your uh, counting down seconds across there um, as it goes. Stop it. It's less of that hard, crunchy uh, movement that you often find in mecha courses or in chronos. And then just pop it back to the top. Yeah, it's pretty silky actually. Um, if you're used to that harder, you know, more, as I say, like crunch uh, with the action buttons there, this one um, is really not doing that at all. And then it pretty, it's pretty decent lining up at the top there, isn't it? Yeah, that's not too bad at all. Um, case body, so you've got highly polished uh, sides there with some brushing on to, onto the top, as you can see. And then the case back. Um, pretty straightforward, nothing too um, elaborate on the back here. Um, considering it's from the speed, time, and range, you could, you know, perhaps argue that they'd add something a little bit more special on the back here. But yeah, I mean, just uh, stand, standard details. Um, the clasp, again, then obviously uh, pretty decent, but it is only the single uh, with the release. I, I have a personal preference. I, I like the uh, the keeper across the top. Um, it just, yeah just for my OCD, just I just find it works a little bit better. Um, the bracelet is pretty solid, um, it's not too jangly, and there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of movement in there, but I don't think it's too bad. It's better, for example, than it was on my Willard, uh, so there's a step up there, and it doesn't look that dissimilar to that strap also. On this uh, bracelet, it, it weighs in around 160 grams, and I'm wondering if, for example, on a Jubilee uh, or a beads of brace, br beads of rice, even it might lighten it up a tad, and then it also might add more or contribute slightly more to the retro look of these. So please do share your strap ideas if something has worked well for you. Uh, let me just zoom back in so that we can have a, a closer look at the subdials. As I say, subdials pretty well executed. They sort of sit on that golden sea, don't they? Uh, quite deep in there. Obviously, then at the at the three o'clock. Sorry, get my finger out of the way. At the, at the three o'clock, then you've got your 24 um, 24 hour um, uh, running seconds over here. Note as well on the six, um, you've got the uh, power reserve between the F and the E. And obviously, then when you um, you click that up, you, you you action your chrono. That then reverses back to uh, to, to to the uh, minute counter. All right, as I say. Quite silky. That move, that uh, action, very, 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 very different to uh, many other uh, chronos that uh, I featured of late. Um, so I'm talking positively about it. Let's find a couple of negatives, and the first one you'll probably see down there at the ten past four is that date window. It reminds me of some citizen date windows. It's just, it's just pathetically small. Um, it's not framed. I mean. <laughs> And, and, I, and I also think it's um, potentially a complication too much because you've already got a very busy dial. So do you really need that silly little date in the bottom there? Um, yeah, in, in, in some angles, you, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's completely imperceptible. So yeah, a little bit of an odd choice leaving that one in there. The loom, of course, is, is Seiko's um, proprietary and I think it works pretty damn well. I don't really have any complaints. I've seen some watches recently where the infill on the hands and things like that doesn't doesn't look very good. And nice to see that they've kept the the loom slivers at the nine and the three as well. As I say, it just sort of adds to that overall. Um, as I say, pretty pretty decent on that. And I also kind of like as well. You can just see the the shine uh, from the dial as it as it comes up and complements the loom. Also, very impressed. I think to me, it's a hugely fun uh, release uh, from Seiko. Brave, brave uh, color choice on here as well. I think the best option is really to stay away from the hype and the pogueness and simply look at this just as, a, just as that golden summer speed timer. And that's pretty much enough. I don't think it needs anything else. Lastly, the price, these two come at six, these do come in here at the UK at 600 pounds. And that to me is a little bit high. Um, but generally keeping in within in Seiko's prices being being very high. Um, I'd, couldn't, I'd consider buying one for myself if it was closer to 400 pounds. 
but one thing I would suggest with first class watches is that they have a best price offer option and I'm sure they will do their best to help you out. So over to you guys. What do you think about this? Um, have you been affected by the hype? Has it, has it put you off looking at one of these? Have the colours attracted to you a little bit more? They could have done a sign crown for 600 quid. But anyway, that's <laughs> just me and my, and my demands. Um, as I say, for me, just the colours on this, absolutely superb. It shouldn't work, but it looks really, very fun indeed. And as I say, on wrist, as I say, I, I'm really liking the colours. Uh, very impressive. What's your thoughts, guys? Uh, and uh, thanks, as always, for your time and for your view. And we'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.